While an activity may take an entire class period to complete, it's useful to build in checks for understanding along the way. It's really important to think about times when you're going to um, implement checks for understanding, and so making sure that you know those breaks within your, your lesson and your activity um, where you are going to do either a formal or informal check for mastery. There are multiple strategies you can use to check for student understanding. Use checkpoints in your activity, check in with students individually, and whole class check-ins. It's really helpful to, um, as you're going through the activity, not to think of it as just this one long activity that really has no uh, obvious breaks in it, but to think about um, the activity of having various sections that are chunked by idea or topic, and each section has kind of a, a mini objective. And so I wanna make sure that after that section, the whole class is on the same page with that. I'll have checkpoints along the way where either I walk around the room and uh, ask some questions, or we might have clicker questions. One way that I found that's really useful is to make a note on, on my teacher copy of the activity sheet where I'm going to make sure that we have a share out as a class discussion or where I'm going to make sure that I go around and circulate throughout the class. You can check in with students individually or in small groups. That really is just by, by looking over shoulders and then having those conversations with the students. Yeah, I found that it really is most helpful rather than focusing on what they wrote down in their activity to bring them back to the sim, have them show me what they did on the sim, and then, um, and then have them reflect on the data or the observations that they recorded on their paper. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Make the earth take more time to go around the sun. Who would like to try that out for us? Joseph? One way to quickly check how students are doing is by using what we call concept tables in your activity to organize student responses. For instance, in build an atom, if I add a proton, how does that change the charge? Increase, decrease, stay the same. That allows a facilitator to look quickly to see if their students are understanding the material with a quick glance at the tables instead of having to read a long sentence. Sometimes you'll, you'll find that students might be going off in, in the wrong direction, or they might even just be making a, a mistake because of a misunderstanding about um, vocabulary. You might bring the whole class together if you see a pattern of confusion. To make this model even more accurate, what should the Earth be doing as well? What should it be doing, Mark? Rotating around its axis. Rotating its axis, right. But that's not what we're actually looking at. We're not looking at rotations today. We're really looking at orbits. So. You'll start saying the same thing over and over again to everybody, and you just have to get, OK, everybody. Okay, this is what we're seeing. You may also require students to check in with you. Sometimes in the activities I will put in, you know, a question that's like a checkpoint, where then you have to call me over and I'll check and see how you're doing. That's my quick and dirty where I can check and see, okay, did they get the general idea? Or what do I need to work on some more? Or you can bring the class back together for a whole class discussion. As students are sharing out their response, I might ask another student, do you agree with that? And then call on another student, what did you get for that second part of it? How would you add on to your partner's thinking? And so in that way, I'm able to make sure that all the students in the class, you know, we come to some agreement about some of these fundamental concepts that they absolutely have to master in each section of the activity. So I find that clickers work best because then everybody gets a voice and we can open the sim back up in class and have a class discussion. And I try to make sure the clicker questions invite discussion and not just check learning. The question is, how does the color of the chemical identify whether it's acid or base? So we started with chicken soup. And it was yellow with a 5.8. What would be another good chemical to test? Battery acid. Battery acid, because why? Yellow. It's also yellow. And it's an acid. So is yellow mean acid? Yeah, drain cleaner. Is color an identifying test? No. See our separate video, Facilitating Whole Class Discussions, for more about this aspect of FED activities.